Uh, do you find that people sometimes are wanting you to say, just tone it down a little bit, Congresswoman, just tone it down? Do you hear that? I, you know, I, I think that people would love if I would tone it down. But, you know, we, we had um, our, our Lord Jesus that certainly didn't tone it down for anyone. We had the apostles who carried this message of the gospel. And even the leaders in their days, they said, you know, it's fine. You can, you can pray, but just don't do it in the name of Jesus. And uh, so now here we are in another cycle of cancel culture. But this is nothing new. Cancel culture has been around since the beginning of time. Cain canceled Abel. We have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that were thrown into the, furni uh, the fiery furnace. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar wanted to cancel them, but there stood another in the midst of them, and he was as if the son of God. A and then they tried to cancel Jesus, but you can't cancel God. There's no other way to describe Representative Lauren Boebert than a total, complete mess of a human being. There are so many jokes to be made about her recent comparison of herself to Jesus Christ. But to me, it's so deeply sad and aggravating because I really think she believes it. And, and so we, we right now are, are charged to be bold in this time. And God has given us a, a, a spirit uh, of, of power and mind, uh, might and a well-disciplined mind, not a spirit of timidity. And this means not only that she's a total raving mad lunatic, but that she doesn't understand a single thing about the faith she claims to be a part of. One part of her rant to Mike Huckabee I want to hone in on is the part where she describes the biblical history of cancel culture. Cain canceling Abel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abdenego thrown into the fiery furnace. And finally, her assertion that, quote, and then they tried to cancel Jesus, but you can't cancel God. What Bobert fundamentally misunderstands here, aside from everything about the biblical context of those stories, is that the Bible is not a reference guide that can be easily translatable to fit every one of our modern circumstances. Sure, people can find examples to live by from the Old and New Testaments, but there is an alarming trend in evangelical communities, specifically with a right-wing agenda, to use the Bible as a self-help manual, flipping the pages to find examples to use as legitimization of their terrible contemporary political beliefs. As the Christian writer John Pavlovitz points out, that people who worship God in this way, quote, passionately worship a deity made in their own image, white, American, Republican, male, and perpetually terrified of Muslims, immigrants, gay children, special counsel reports, Harry Potter, Starbucks holiday cups, yoga, wind turbines, science, everything. He goes on. He cannot protect them from the encroaching monsters they are certain lurk around every corner. He is exactly right. The far right's God is exists to serve their personal, specific, material outlook on the world, which is not at all what a true concept of an ahistorical, apolitical, moral god really is. People like Bobert have no respect for God. Bobert has absolutely nothing in common with the biblical figure she references, and she's telling on herself and her conception of Christianity by insisting that there are any similarities. Above all of the things this comparison is, false, lazy, and just stupid, it's also deeply sad. And it's sad that there are so many who think that she speaks any truth. Thanks so much for watching. You can follow me on all platforms at carojohnson917.